Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, a warm welcome to you all. Uh, today's conference uh, on uh, the role of international law in promoting women's uh, rights. And this topic combines uh, two themes which are uh, both close to me uh, and all of us uh, at the Ministry, uh, human rights and women's rights. And both themes are highly uh, timely and uh, very central on the international agenda. The Commission uh, on the, of the Status of Women starts its 58th session today, and in the next two weeks, the state parties, together with the UN entities, uh, will focus on two important uh, themes for women's rights. Firstly, the Commission will discuss the challenges and achievements uh, <coughs> in the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals, for women and girls. And secondly, uh, there will be a follow-up discussion on women's and girls' participation in education, science and technology, and equal opportunities for work and decent work. And both themes are crucial in promoting women's rights. Finland's seventh report uh, to the uh, uh, CEDAW Committee, the Committee on the Elimination of uh, Discrimination Against Women, was examined last month, and we received the Committee's recommendations only a few days ago. The recommendations show that, in spite of comprehensive uh, national and international legislation, there is still room for major improvements. Finland's main challenges remain in reducing violence against women and in improving equal working conditions, uh, including equal pay. And this also shows the importance of uh, implementing laws. And I will first focus on uh, uh, international, uh, the international legal framework for women's rights. The non-discrimination principle uh, is established already in the Human Rights Declaration. Uh, from 1948. And after the declaration, the main international uh, legal instruments stipulating uh, women's rights is the Convention uh, on the Elimination of All Forms uh, of Discrimination Against uh, Women. And this year marks the 35th anniversary uh, of the adoption of this convention. The Convention aims at uh, uh, realizing women's rights on equal basis in education, participation uh, to working life, health care and women's economic rights. A World Bank study shows uh, that five years after, the, uh, after a, a country adopts uh, the Convention, its pace of reform almost doubles uh, compared to that of the previous uh, 15 years. And this is a clear proof uh, that adhering to the Convention does bring results and pays off. The Convention established also a committee to oversee uh, the state parties, uh, that state parties fulfill their obligations uh, in accordance with the Convention. And the committee has played an important role uh, in the promotion of women's rights as it has interpreted the Convention uh, in a timely manner and has drafted important general recommendations. And, for example, the committee made already in 1992 a general recommendation on violence against women, and this has played a crucial role, for example, in raising awareness of this uh, issue. And it is also interesting to note that there are several regional human rights uh, instruments uh, which run parallel uh, to the United Nations uh, norm-making process. The oldest regional instrument is the European Convention on Human Rights from 1950. The Convention it contains a non-discrimination provision and the European Court of Human Rights has actively implemented and also promoted women's rights in its jurisprudence 
in various walks of life, uh, both public and private. The Council of Europe adopted uh, the first comprehensive European-wide convention on combating violence uh, against women and domestic violence uh, in 2011. The convention can be considered progressive in its coverage. It is the first ever convention stating clearly uh, that the so-called due diligence principle for state parties uh, <coughs> is uh, uh, applicable. And in practice, this means uh, that the states are responsible uh, for acts and negligence performed by non-state actors. The Council of Europe has also uh, uh, agreed on recommendations on LGBT rights. And this is also an important milestone for promoting uh, the rights of minorities. And Finland has contributed in various ways to the work uh, of the Council of Europe in all of these uh, issues. Human rights, democracy, and the rule of law are also the core values uh, of the European Union. These are embedded in its uh, founding treaty, uh, and they were reinforced when the EU adopted the Charter of Fundamental uh, Rights uh, in 2000. And they were strengthened further uh, when the Charter became legally binding with the entry into force um, of the Lisbon Treaty in 2009. The EU is also preparing uh, its accession to the European Convention on Human Rights. This has been a very long drawn out process uh, which uh, Finland uh, started uh, already uh, over a decade ago uh, and <coughs> We will not give up before it, uh, we see that it is uh, uh, finalized. And this will obviously further strengthen human rights in Europe by bringing the EU and its institutions under external scrutiny from a human rights perspective. The Inter-American Human Rights uh, System is based on the Convention of Human Rights uh, from uh, 1969. Uh, the Convention uh, pro uh, proscribes uh, discrimination on the basis of sex and guarantees equality before the law. The additional protocol uh, to the Intra-American Convention, the so-called San Salvador Protocol, repeats the state obligation to act according uh, to the protocol and also recognizes that different groups may require additional protection. And since 1994, a special rapporteur on uh, women's rights has analyzed uh, member states' laws and provisions on non-discrimination on grounds of sex and equ uh, the equality provisions of the Convention on Human Rights. The African Charter on Human Rights uh, from 1981 contains a non-discrimination provision covering uh, sex. The African system has also a special rapporteur on the rights of women who has been working uh, together with the UN and the Inter-American Special Rapporteurs on Violence Against Women. The African Union has adopted the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on Women in Africa uh, in 2003, the provisions of which are inspired by CEDAW, and which includes both civil and political, as well as economic, social, and cultural rights. In addition to this, and unlike CEDAW, the African Protocol includes multiple provisions addressing violence against women and uh, girl uh, children in both public and private spheres. The Arab Charter on Human Rights from 2004 reaffirms a commitment uh, to the existing International uh, Bill of Human Rights and to the UN Charter, while also, quote, having regard to the Cairo Declaration on Human Rights in Islam. The uh, Charter includes uh, many positive uh, provisions, 
not least uh, uh, the standard non-discrimination provision found in international human rights instruments, uh, and which include the prohibition of discrimination on grounds of sex. And moreover, it also provides uh, that all persons are equal before the law and entitled to be protected uh, without discrimination. But the Charter also has uh, many shortcomings. This overview uh, shows that there is a comprehensive legal uh, coverage uh, uh, and tools to protect and promote uh, women's uh, rights, both in international, uh, on the international and on national levels. It is also important to note that many actors, uh, including the Human Rights Council, the UN uh, treaty bodies and human rights courts, have influenced substantially the interpretation and implementation uh, of uh, the legal norms, as well uh, as uh, the international uh, discussion in, on women's uh, rights. However, uh, during the past few years, efforts to promote uh, and protect human rights have faced quite a number of uh, challenges, both old and new. The international climate in the uh, area of human rights has become more challenging. It is of utmost importance to maintain the integrity of human rights uh, law in a situation where its universal nature is increasingly questioned on the grounds of cultural relativism. Especially in the field of women's rights, there is a clear danger of a backlash while we have also seen, of course, some positive developments. Efforts to promote uh, sexual and reproductive health rights uh, continue to meet strong resistance in uh, the international fora. It should be recognized that uh, women who can freely decide on their sexuality and reproductive uh, health have better possibilities uh, to educate themselves, take part, uh, in uh, working life and the society as a whole. And Finland is co uh, committed to continuing its work uh, in promoting and protecting gender issues, both nationally and internationally. In Finland, we take gender equality seriously. Gender equality is a significant uh, societal goal in our country. It must be taken uh, into account in all uh, aspects of public uh, decision-making uh, and activities. And if I was asked to give a single reason for Finland's status as the least failed state in the world, uh, I would uh, answer that it is gender equality and the full empowerment of women. But being least failed does not uh, rule out uh, the need to do better. Being least failed also indicates that you, can, you may have some failures and you can also uh, always improve. Uh, one of the areas uh, that needs special attention also in our country is violence against women, which continues to be a severe problem. Women's rights cannot be fully ensured if violence against women is not eliminated. The Ministry for Foreign Affairs published its first human rights strategy last summer, and in this strategy, women's rights continue uh, be, to be one of the most important themes. Also in our development cooperation, which is based on human rights, the promotion of uh, women's rights is uh, central on the agenda. The role of women and girls in armed conflicts was recognized uh, uh, already in the Beijing Declaration uh, and Plan of Action uh, almost 20 years ago. And five years after Beijing, the UN Security Council approved the landmark resolution 1325 on women, peace, and security. And since then, the Security Council has also passed five more resolutions uh, uh, to complement 1325 uh, in addressing different aspects uh, uh, of the issue of women, peace, and security. 
Finland supports and promotes uh, the comprehensive and balanced uh, implementation uh, of the resolution and other related uh, resolutions. Finland has adopted uh, her second national action plan for the years uh, 2012 to 2016 to uh, implement uh, resolution 1325. And the government's uh, program uh, 2011 stated that Finland emphasizes the participation of women in crisis management and peace building. And it strives to promote the status of women and girls in armed conflicts in accordance uh, with uh, UN Security Council Resolution 1325. And we have been doing also a lot of work on uh, implementation of 1325 in many countries, including not so easy cases such as Afghanistan, uh, Kenya and elsewhere. <coughs> and we are also uh, seeking to put this firmly on the agenda of the uh, OSCE. Gender is also a cross-cutting issue for Finland in mediation. Finland promotes female candidates uh, to international posts in crisis management, and we have been particularly successful in recruiting women in civilian crisis management. And I would also like to underline that promoting women's effective participation in peace processes and mediation is extremely important. Many high-level mediators, uh, including Elisabeth Rehn, here, present here today, have pointed out that they have never encountered a woman at a high level, woman at a high level mediation table. And research indicates that including women in negotiating group, in a negotiating group, makes the group smarter, and smarter groups make better decisions, and better decisions uh, pave the way for a more sustainable future. Women's participation is also very important in preventing uh, the recurrence uh, of conflict, and it makes peace more lasting and durable. And we can look at the ongoing uh, Geneva II uh, process uh, uh, on Syria uh, and the very feeble uh, uh, status that women have in that, which is not encouraging uh, if we are expecting positive results. And finally, I would like to mention a new study commissioned by our Ministry uh, for Foreign Affairs. The study deals with um, gender equality in, a, uh, in global value change and examines what kinds uh, of uh, uh, role uh, development cooperation uh, supporting trade has um, uh, in the promotion of gender equality and women's employment in developing countries. Uh, this study collects best practices and analyzes different approaches uh, and instruments that could advance uh, equality and women's approaches and, and women's employment in developing uh, countries by uh, <coughs> means of trade policy and especially development uh, cooperation uh, in support of trade. And this uh, the intention of the study uh, is to support uh, uh, the consideration uh, of gender equality issues uh, in our own uh, trade policies, especially in development uh, uh, cooperation. And for this purpose, the study will also propose and recommend uh, concrete measures uh, to back up the planning of projects and programs. It is just one example uh, of uh, the kind of work that uh, not only Finland but many other countries are doing, and I think it is important that uh, we follow closely what is being done in other countries, learn from best practices, uh, and everybody is free uh, to uh, imitate whatever we have done in Finland if they think that it is yeah, useful. It, this is a very much a shared universal uh, uh, issue which we must uh, all address in good cooperation. I wish you a very uh, successful conference and fruitful discussions on how to best promote women's rights. And once more, a warm welcome to Finland, Helsinki, and the Ministry for Foreign Affairs. Thank you.
Well, obviously, um, most countries, if not quite all, uh, have their legislation formally in order, and they, it respects equality. But we all know that implementation of this uh, is sorely lacking in many countries. And this is what these international mechanisms for monitoring uh, uh, and uh, uh, passing uh, resolutions um, uh, and uh, peer reviews uh, on human rights implementation, why they are so important. Human rights is not uh, an uh, internal matter for any country. This has been recognized already for decades, and we are all answer answerable and accountable uh, to others. Uh, and I think that uh, looking at the implementation will be increasingly uh, important. Yes, we still need to do actually work on legislation. If you think of some of the news coming out from some of the Middle, uh, Middle, Middle East uh, countries, they are worrying also in terms of legislation. Uh, but implementing uh, even good legislation uh, is important. And this is what we need to do in our country as well. I mean, violence against women uh, is strictly forbidden uh, in, in Finland, no doubt about that. Uh, but we have not been uh, able to uh, root out uh, this uh, uh, pest uh, from our country either yet. Obviously, it is political. Everything is political. Uh, legislation and implementation, um, they are all uh, political issues. And therefore, it means that we also, in, politi uh, in political discussions, uh, have to be aware of this and have to take this up. Uh, it is not only a judicial issue, but using the judiciary uh, as a basis for approaching uh, these issues can be still quite useful. And I'm thinking particularly about China, where we have um, the former uh, uh, president of the Finnish Administrative Court, Pekka Halberi, uh, who is a very popular writer in China. He uh, has actually several books on the rule of law uh, being published in uh, China. Uh, and it is an indication that although China still has a huge way to go uh, before full respect and implementation of human rights, they are themselves aware uh, of the problem, and they are willing to engage in dialogue. Uh, and this is what we need to uh, uh, move forward on, uh, because it's, it's not only a, an issue of condemnation uh, when we see uh, a violation of human rights or women's rights. It is also an issue of a, po a positive approach uh, showing uh, uh, what can be done, how we can ameliorate the situation, and uh, what are the benefits uh, of uh, implementing full gender equality. And here I would point out not only to the index of uh, failed states, but to almost all of these international beauty contests where countries are raged uh, uh, on the basis of their achievements in, in what most of us in the world think are desirable achievements. And there, uh, almost always, uh, the five Nordic countries uh, are to be found among the top ten. And we should all be prepared to answer when, when People ask, well, why are the Nordics doing so well in this space? That, that number one, it's, the, it's uh, gender equality. There are other items too, but I believe that this is the central key. Of course, we do have Catherine Ashton as a good role model also uh, working. But uh, you're quite right that, that this is very important to, to, yeah, I mean, on all levels. I mean, uh, on the negotiating tables, at the negotiating tables, on, on the uh, delegations and so on. But it also goes down uh, to the uh, very basic level. The fact that we have uh, uh, almost half of our people Finns, in civil and crisis management operations are women, police uh, women and others. Uh, and also increasing, although uh, we do not have compulsory military service for women, women are also increasingly taking part in military uh, crisis management operation. And these are also locally, regionally important role models. We have seen that, we have experience of that. So it has to be from at, at all levels. And we try, uh, certainly, to find good candidates, present good candidates, uh, women candidates, uh, uh, to these posts uh, where they can, uh, through their uh, achievements, uh, provide the role models and encourage others also uh, to come forward. There is a lot of work to be done in this. And I would also think that it will be very interesting and important to see how the new commission will be set up. And I would expect that it should be, uh, reflect much more gender equality than the present one. 
Well, I'm glad that you mentioned one very important tool, and that's the work of the NGOs and civil society, which I didn't mention, but which is uh, self-evident and clear for us in Finland. We want, uh, it is part of our tradition, how we work both in development policies on human rights uh, and other issues. We engage very closely with the, the NGO community, both our own national NGOs as well as international NGOs. Uh, a good example of this was uh, our work uh, to get the arms trade treaty uh, uh, negotiated, where we, uh, which wouldn't have we wouldn't have achieved it without uh, the uh, strong uh, efforts of the international uh, organizations, NG, uh, NGOs uh, on, on the issue, and it's, they still continue to work to get it ratified uh, in all countries. Uh, so, uh, and in, in working for women's rights, we try to engage with uh, uh, and encourage our own NGOs uh, to work together with uh, uh, NGOs uh, in North Africa, for example, and we support these uh, uh, local NGOs in, in their work. So it's one uh, way of doing this because the, obviously civil society doesn't have the uh, diplomatic constraints and they know also the local conditions uh, and can find the be best uh, ways of uh, influencing. But they need support also from, from the outside. It is. It is said in Finland that the uh, a women's euro is 80% of uh, a man's euro, showing that uh, there are structural uh, uh, impediments uh, to equality on labor markets. Formally, of course, People are paid, respective of gender, the same wage for the same work. But there are many structural uh, impediments uh, uh, to this full equality. I think the situation will gradually, and has been changing, but we need also to do uh, much more work on this. And we need to also have the uh, trade unions, which are in Finland uh, still relatively strong, uh, much more engaged on this. Well, I think the answer is obviously that they are very much uh, interconnected and that uh, gender equality needs to be part of cultural diplomacy. But also, cultural diplomacy can address and should address uh, the, uh, some of the cultural impediments to equality that, that we still have because of religious values and traditions and cultural traditions in many places uh, which uh, are a uh, hindrance uh, to gender equality. And they should be also openly addressed. Uh, so. I think cultural diplomacy has to also uh, answer the issue of cultural relativism. Uh, while we respect different country, uh, cultures, and we have to do so, there are certain universal values uh, uh, which do not allow, on the basis of cultural relativism, uh, to accept uh, the kind of uh, uh, gender equality and mistreatment of women and girls that we still see in many countries, which is defended as being part of our national culture. That is unacceptable. Well, if uh, gender equality is sometimes a challenging issue, LGBT rights are certainly even more so. And we are facing very, some very serious uh, backlashes and situations in, in some countries, particularly in Africa. So we need to uh, address them. but. There are very, there are different ways of trying uh, to uh, use the megaphone diplomacy. Uh, public condemnation is sometimes necessary, and uh, we cannot be of except of one single opinion on that. But uh, uh, but sometimes trying to influence uh, is is another way. And some, uh, I would only refer to the experience that we have, a, already for over ten years, uh, almost fifteen years, had a series of yearly. Uh, meetings between five, the five Nordic uh, and um, foreign ministers and the foreign minister of ten African countries. Uh, and these have been a very, very good meetings because they are totally informal. Uh, and the best part are the uh, dinner meetings where we have only the ministers sitting up at the t sitting at the table. And that was the occasion we had in uh, last summer in Hamelina here in Finland. Uh, well, I was able to take up the issue with him. There was the Nigerian minister, there were others too on that uh, of LGBT rights in that country. And it was a very, very interesting discussion. But I think the most effective intervention came from our uh, South African colleague. Because South Africa is the model country also in terms of legislation and starting out from its uh, uh, constitution. Uh, on uh, respecting full equality and being against discrimination against all minorities, including the LGBT. And uh, he was able to, the South African representatives, to 
the mind uh, uh, all of the all of his African colleagues as well that uh, it was not an easy issue for them in Africa when they were uh, in South Africa when they were preparing the legislation but uh, the, at the end of the day the argument that a movement the African National Congress he was part of the uh, wider leadership uh, which uh, has consistently fought uh, against discrimination. How could it accept discrimination in, on, on some other issues as well? And that decided it, and they are fully committed. And I think that, uh, the, the other African countries uh, should look at South Africa, and also there are others, but it's not the only one, where, which, is, uh, uh, which respects uh, full equality also in this respect. I remember already, perhaps it was the late 50s, there was a pub book published in the US the ugly American, about Americans' intention on doing good uh, and actually uh, creating uh, conflicts in uh, uh, third world countries. Uh, I hope that the Americans have since then learned something about the mistakes that they have done. But I believe that uh, uh, not too far in the future, someone will write the, uh, a book, The Ugly Chinaman, uh, or something in uh, that nature, because uh, the way that the Chinese are working in African countries is also uh, raising uh, quite a lot of opposition. So I think that the Chinese will also learn uh, and must learn uh, to do things a bit differently. But uh, bringing money, investing in Africa is not negative in itself, uh, but there have to be certain uh, rules and conditions which are ap applicable to everyone in respecting labor legislation, labor rights, uh, uh, decent work, uh, human rights in general. Well, we and the foreign ministry have been pressing for this already for some time, uh, but it boils down to actual, actually to resources, because uh, the Minister for Social Affairs says that we cannot ratify it unless we have the full power to implement it, and we need more resources uh, for uh, uh, protecting uh, uh, women, uh, which are not in the budget as yet. So, uh, because. Finland has this tradition, which I think is correct in itself, that we won't ratify international treaties unless we are sure that all our legislation uh, and all our resourcing of the implementation is in order. Uh, many countries have a different uh, policy. They, they find it quite easy to ratify uh, treaties, but then the implementation is lacking. Uh, but we will press on, and I hope certainly uh, that by the end of this year, we will have the ratification process been uh, finalized. Our legislation in general is gender uh, neutral. Uh, and there are, there are, of course, old legislation still, uh, which needs to be uh, uh, reviewed in this respect. But when we introduced already over 20 years ago uh, quotas uh, for, uh, on gender quotas for uh, committees and uh, local government uh, uh, and so on, uh, they, they were gender neutral. It has to be 40% of either sex. And I think that this is important because we actually, um, our experience that sometimes we need to, uh, need to also look after the rights of boys <laughs> uh, because they are unable to do so themselves. So they are facing increasingly uh, increasing uh, uh, problems also um, in, in many spheres. Uh, so, for example, to just to name the uh, our, uh, intake into the foreign ministry, uh, which is 80, over 80% 80 women, and actually uh, I think we need to, to see that we also employ women, men also in the future in, in our ministry. <laughs> but thank you very much. I, I have to uh, go on to other duties, but uh, I hope that uh, you will continue this uh, very uh, uh, fruitful uh, discussion uh, and go more deeply into the issues concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you.